Alrighty, so the topic I want to talk about today is uh, this is going to be the manner of which the police up in Canada remove the truckers from the streets of their protests, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be the second video I've posted about this topic. And it's kind of funny because the first video I posted, it had an interesting uh, reaction from people. I was mildly surprised. Um, one thing I was surprised about is the number of people who had to, they got angry with me, said that they disagreed with me and they wanted to list a lot of things. And I'm not talking about one specific person. There was a few and I got some emails about this. Um, the funny thing from my perspective is that the things they were claiming to disagree on aren't necessarily points that I was making in the video. Uh, that video was not about COVID, it wasn't about vaccines or effectiveness of vaccines or anything like that. The, the purpose of that video was to talk about the distinction between two protests, similarities and differences of those protests and um, the type of people who are supporting those protests. Because the point that I wanted to make was that in 2020, we had some protests and some riots happening. Um, there was one particular um, political element that supported what was going on. And there was a lot of people that didn't support what was going on. The police officers were going into these riots and trying to clear the streets. And a lot of people in political power agreed with the people who were doing those riots and they ordered the police to stop stop their enforcement action and uh effectively what they did was they they basically wrote law um they said you know what from this point on if you want to protest and you want to block the road and you want to stop cars from being able to drive down the road and you want to halt commerce in this particular area um, that is now considered a peaceful protest Regardless of how many people you murder during your peaceful protest or how many buildings you burn, it's peaceful. That's the message that we were told. So then these truckers go up to Canada and they do the same thing. And there was a lot of people trying to say that they weren't being peaceful. Well, the people who said that the truckers were being violent were a lot of the same people who said that the Black Lives Matter people were being peaceful. And there was a lot of other rhetoric going on and that was the main point that I wanted to make about these two things. Now, what I wanna get into next is that these protesters are now being, being removed from the streets. And I'm seeing a lot of rhetoric from people that I don't really appreciate. Uh, this is people who are calling out police officers saying, you know, you took an oath to support the constitution and you're supposed to protect people and all this other stuff. Why are you supporting tyranny? All this other stuff. Um, a police officer takes an oath. Yeah. To support the constitution, which your first amendment is part of the constitution. But one of the a couple of other jobs of the police department is to protect property, um, to enforce the law and to ensure the free flow of commerce. The, that's the role of a police officer. The role of a police officer is not to take sides of a, a political debate and decide which people they, they agree with and which people they don't. There's laws and the police are supposed to enforce those laws. Now, this particular protest has been interesting because some of the stuff the Canadian government has done um, without a doubt has been underhanded to say the least. Uh, the seizing of private assets, whether it be fuel that was provided to these um, truckers, whether it be their private bank accounts, whether it be donations that were given to support them. Um, these are all things that should not have been stopped. Um, there should be recourse for that. There should be serious recourse for those actions. The other things that I'm hearing about um, the Canadian government's talking about using cell phone, cell phone tower data to track down anyone who was in the area, the vicinity of one of these protests for any significant period of time and track them down after this is done. Uh, they're treating these people like, and they're treating anybody who was in the vicinity of these protests 
as a terrorist. Um, that is inappropriate. Same thing happened in the United States after the January 6th incident that happened at the Capitol. Uh, there were people who were a mile away from the building who were literally just there for a political rally and they had federal agents visit their homes. That is inappropriate. And I want to be clear about that. But what I'm talking about specifically today is whether or not police officers are within their authority and if it's the right thing for them to do to enforce laws regarding people blocking roads and occupying city streets. I'm of the opinion that at some point in time, police have to start being the police again. The situation up in Canada with all the freezing of assets and stealing of gasoline and calling people racist because they want to protest, um, that all that stuff aside, you know, the, the police have been fairly hands off. Uh, from what I've seen, it's for the most part, because this is almost three weeks worth of activity, um, it's been fairly cordial between both parties. Then the decision was made that they're not going to let this continue. So they put forth an order that said, um, basically, this is a few days ago, said, tomorrow's the day. If you're downtown in the vicinity of this, this has now been deemed an illegal gathering. Um, if you're found on site, you will be subject to arrest and fine. Um, a lot of people were calling that tyranny and they, those people are wrong. The police and the local law enforcement authorities, that's within their, that's their, that's their freaking job. That's what they do. You can't just park your, your, your truck in the middle of the road and leave it there forever. Um, at some point in time, law enforcement has to act. Now, I'll step back for just a moment. There was a video that I saw from uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, maybe a week ago now, and it was him giving a statement towards the protesters. And it, he was saying, hey, this is, these are my thoughts. People wanted me to give a statement to these guys. Here's my statement. And everyone expected um, a rah-rah cheering them on. And what he said was, you know, you, you guys all got together to do something that you, you were all angry about and you decided to make a stand about something, a political stand and let your voice be heard. Um, he said, you've, you've been successful at doing that. You've gotten the ball rolling. People are speaking for you in parliament now. Um, provinces all around Canada are beginning to take the steps and do the things that you were asking, that you were demanding be done. You now have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to let that ball continue to roll or if you think that's not good enough. And if you continue to stay where you're at, um, basically you run the risk of out, outstaying your welcome and uh, turning public support against you. As well as the longer you stay there, the longer, the more you're beginning to push the hand of law enforcement. And when law enforcement interacts with you, there's a probability of violent conflict and you have to determine whether or not that's something that you want. And no, that was, he wasn't telling them what to do, but if you could read between the lines, he was kind of telling them what to do. Um, at least that's how I took it. And the other day we got to that point. Um, a lot of the truckers had already picked up their rigs and moved and there was still a decent amount um, sticking around. The roads were still blocked. And law enforcement put forth the order that said, tomorrow we're coming and people that are found in this area are going to be found to be um, participating in an illegal gathering. This is no longer considered um, whatever you call, uh, you know, there's, there's stipulations for um, gatherings. Uh, I'm, I'm a little brain fogged. I just worked out and I haven't eaten yet. But you all know what I'm talking about. Same thing happened with Black Lives Matter. The police officers were told to back off. For a long period of time, they were said, look, just go away. These guys will get tired and they'll leave. Well, they didn't. As a matter of fact, they build bonfires in the middle of the road. They were driving up and down the road with um, long guns hanging out of the back of cars. They were firing rounds. Most people were getting shot at different um, roadblocks and stuff around the country. There was one in Austin. This kid was carrying an AK and he got shot. There was the CHOP, 
where some teenagers in a stolen car drove into the area and they got blasted. There were protesters that were getting smashed um, by, by cars that didn't want to stop for them. There was a lot of violence that began happening and eventually the police had to come in and use their tear gas and use all their implements and move these people. And when that happened, the people on the political left were all screaming, oh, this is police brutality, this is violence, whatever. But the police still had a job to do. And the people on the right were saying, that's that's goddamn right. Like, that's what they get. That's what they get for staying in that street. They were told to move, they didn't move. Now we have a situation where this is a, a protest group that's from the, the right side of the political spectrum. It's not from the left, like Black Lives Matter. It's the opposite political spectrum. And now the police gave these people a warning. They said, look, you have to get out of the road. It's our job to clear the road. We're coming tomorrow, get you out of the road. So the police come and they start having uses of force against these people. And now people on the political right are saying, these cops are tyrants. They're out there supporting tyranny. Like know your job, you're not fulfilling your oath. Do you not understand you're being hypocritical in this situation? Put yourself in the shoes of that police officer that gave these people weeks to do their thing. Their message was heard. Parliament was beginning to move in their favor. The, these officers weren't simply following orders. They were doing what they were hired to do. And it doesn't matter who, what side of the political aisle you're on, the police have a job to do and they should not be taking politics into account. There's a story that, um, I rem that I think about when I think about this situation and I think about whether or not I would act if I was called to disband a protest that I agreed with. Um, it's similar to if I had to arrest somebody who was who I supported. It'd be it'd be weird, but I would I would do it because um, that's my job. That's my responsibility. But the story that I want to talk about, I think it was in the year 2000. It was uh, like the Camp David Accord or something like that. The U.S. has been like a, the middleman in the uh, Middle East peace process between Israel and Palestine for my entire life. Um, peace in the Middle East, from when I was a kid, always meant Israel and Palestine. Um, and there was one of the Camp David Accords, I believe it was in the year 2000. Um, Israel agreed to give up a small piece of land and let the Palestinians have that piece of land. Um, I don't remember a lot of specifics about it. It wasn't very big. It might have been a couple square miles. I, I don't remember specifically. But I know that there were, um, there were Jews living in those areas. There was Israelis living in those houses in those areas. And uh, there was... It wasn't really debate, but there was a lot of news about how they were refusing to leave their homes. And the Israeli government came to these people and said, listen, we are trying to have peace. Um, we're trying to prevent the loss of possibly tens of thousands of lives. If you could save 10,000 lives, would you move out of your house? And I believe they were being financially compensated for it. And these Israelis were saying, no, this is our land. We we live here we own this this belongs to us and iraqi soldier not iraqi soldiers israeli soldiers were called to remove these people from their homes these were israelis removing israelis from their homes and i remember watching on tv um, sitting at home and i was in the army at the time i was a young soldier i was 20 20 years old 19 or 20 at the time and uh, I remember watching Israeli soldiers dragging people out of their homes. They were dragging husbands and wives and children out of their homes, out of their beds. I have a eight-year-old and a 10-year-old daughter I can't imagine 
<clears throat> having to watch them be dragged out of their beds. But the thing that I'll never forget was the faces of the soldiers. Because they also had tears streaming down their face. They weren't doing this because they wanted to. And they weren't doing it because they were supporting a tyrannical government. Or a system that was tyrannical or whatever. They were doing it because there was a peace accord. And it was supposed to save tens of thousands of lives. And this is what their government had been set up to do with the support of the people. And it, it was their job to enforce the rules of the government. I can't imagine being in that situation. And if, if you know anything about the Israeli conflict, you would know that those soldiers agreed with the people that they were moving from their homes. But what they did was the right thing. It's hard to, it's hard to wrap your head around. So when I think about these officers up in Canada that are being ordered to remove protesters who are blocking roads, and then they approach these protesters and the protesters get online and they physically resist their efforts and the officers are forced, have to use force against these people. Um, I know that's not what they want to be doing. And then when I see the people who were cheering on the police when they were taking out the Black Lives Matter rioters, when I see those people now turning on police, um, it's incredibly disappointing and hypocritical. So yes, the police have a job to do and they have an oath and part of that is enforcing the laws that are put in place. So those are my thoughts for today. Talk to you guys later.